Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another edition of What's Hot with CA Tranquility. I'm your host, Pete Pardo, publisher and CEO of SOT. Today is Saturday, March the 23rd. We're in spring here in the eastern seaboard of the U.S. of A. Kind of cool to see um, nicer weather hopefully coming our way in the weeks to come. We'll see. But as always in the days and weeks that are coming, there's always great new music coming out. So I've got a bunch of things that uh, either have just come out or maybe came out a few months ago. Some last minute uh, late year 2018 stragglers, a bunch of reissues, things like that, but some cool things nonetheless. So let's start off with our featured release of the week. This one just came out. It's the latest from hard rock heavy metal supergroup Last in Line, titled Two. Okay, their second album, sophomore album. Of course, this is the band formed by Vivian Campbell on guitar, X of Dio, current Def Leppard, Andrew Freeman on lead vocals. Andy's been on a plethora of things over the last bunch of years. Uh, we got Vinnie Apice, also X of Dio, current million other bands on drums, and then uh, Phil Susan on bass, and Phil's played with a whole bunch of people, Ozzy and so forth, over the years. Uh, he replaces the late Jimmy Bain, who was on the debut Last in Line album, but he passed away uh, at like the beginning of their tour of that album. I believe uh, they were on a cruise, uh, one of those heavy metal hard rock cruises where he passed away. So um, Phil steps into his place. So here's the second album. If you remember the first album, my thoughts on the first album, I thought it was pretty strong. Thought it could have been a little stronger. You know, when you got the caliber of musicians you have here, I was expecting maybe a little more, but still very strong nonetheless. Got to see them live, put on a great show. They play a bunch of the tunes off the first album and a lot of Dio classics. Here on the second album, I think they're gelling a little bit more as a band. All right. Some stronger tunes on here. I'm still feeling a little like, man, I want a little something more from them. And not really, I, I haven't been able to put my finger on it. I listen to this. I like it. I think I like it better than the debut. I think it's a bit stronger. I'm still like expecting some kind of greatness from these guys. I guess that's what it's all about. But there's really nothing you can complain about. Uh, you got, what, about 11, 12 songs on here. Some strong stuff. Uh, Black Out the Sun I really like. Landslide is really good. Uh, what else? Give Up the Ghost is quite good. Electrified, one of my favorites on the album. Sword from the Stone. Uh, what else? Love and War. Some really good tunes. A couple of the tracks are kind of like okay. Nothing spectacular. Andy sounds great on vocals. Vivian sounds really good too. Maybe I'm expecting a little more crunch from him. I don't know. But as far as like the riffs and the solos, he's playing a lot more on here than you're going to hear on any Def Leppard album. I'll tell you that much. Uh, Vinny's bashing away. It's it's a very, very good album. Like I said, I like it better than the first. I still kind of want a little bit more from these guys, but this is damn fine. Of course, it's on Frontiers Records once again. So uh, last in line, number two, quite good. All right, we got a bunch here from the uh, Always Fine Cruz del Sor label. All right, these are, again, are all late 2018 releases. Sorry, I'm getting to these a little bit late. Um, full reviews of all of them have been on the website for a while. So the first one is from the UK duo known as Lithian, The Waters of Death. So this is basically, like I said, two people in this band, a female vocalist and a uh, multi-instrumentalist, a guy who can kind of do it all. This is very good. Very solid, kind of like symphonic doom and classic metal. Really strong. I'm liking this a lot. There's only six tunes on here. They're all pretty long and involved. Uh, really good, like I said, female vocals, crunchy guitars. It's kind of doomy, kind of like rainbowish in spots. Uh, little touches of prog in there. Um, I like it. Very, very strong. Lithian. Uh, Septagon. What's the name of this one here? Apocalyptic Rhymes. German Thrashers, Thrash and Speed Metal. Um, this is pretty good, solid. It's not going to uh, set the world on fire with originality, but uh, these guys are pretty relentless in their attack. They obviously uh, take a good chunk from the uh, Bay Area, the classic Bay Area Thrash scene. Uh, it's great artwork on that. Just check that out. But a really good band. I've, uh, their last couple of releases have been very good. Very solid. Again, not going to change the world, but if you love really good, solid European thrash metal, this is highly recommended. Also from Germany, power metal guys, Hammer King, Poseidon will carry us home. This is a pretty fun album. Again, that kind of German, you know, these guys, if you've heard any of their previous albums, they're into the whole... You know, obviously, as you can see, stories about sailing ships on the open seas, hoisting your 
you know, glass up high type of power metal, fun stuff, cliche ridden stuff, but very solid. I like, I actually like this one better than the previous two. This one seems a little more down to earth, straight power metal, which I dig quite a bit, uh, but fun. You know, if you, if you love power metal, definitely check out Hammer King. And then here, my favorite out of all of these, uh, the latest from Sacral Rage, Beyond Celestial Echoes. These guys are from Greece. This is a fun album. Kind of like sci-fi, futuristic, speed metal, thrash, classic metal. Think like Merciful Fate, King Diamond, uh, Little Megadeth, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, ripping guitar work. high pitch vocals. Pretty complex arrangements. Pretty heavy. I dig this one a lot. So there's got some solid items there from the Cruz del Sur label. All right, from our folks over, our friends over at Moon June Records, as well as Off Records, this is like a joint promotion there. This is uh, Fusion Band, The Wrong Object, Into the Herd. This is fantastic, folks. All instrumental. If you like that kind of early, mid-70s, jazzy, fusion-y, Frank Zappa period, as well as the Canterbury bands like Hatfield on the, in the North, National Health, so on and so forth, you will love these guys. Okay, uh, Michel Deville, or Michel Delville on guitar and Roland, uh, Marty Melia on bass and tenor, bass and tenor saxes and clarinet, Francois Lorte on tenor and soprano saxes, Antoine Gwinnett on keyboards, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing any of your names wrong, guys, uh, Pierre Motet on bass, and Lorraine Del Chambre on drums, percussion, and samples. This is happening stuff. One of the best instrumental Jazz Fusion albums I've heard uh, here in early 2019. The Wrong Object, Into the Hurt. If you like your jazz proggy, full of Canterbury twist and turns, and uh, like I said, that classic fusion sound, get that at all costs. Quite good. All right, now we got some uh, reissues and things coming up. So this one, very notable. Bebop Deluxe Sunburst Finish Deluxe Edition from our folks over at Esoteric Records, okay? If you're a uh, fan of Bebop Deluxe, or if you're not, easily their top one or two albums, probably for most fans, Sunburst Finished is the best album that they ever released. Uh, it's definitely pretty damn proggy. It's kind of like, you know, prog rock slash art rock slash pop, hard rock, blazing stuff. Great guitar work from Bill Nelson. Cool vocals, nice arrangements, some pop hooks. And here you get the, uh, the original album, so remastered. Um, what do we got here? The original stereo mix remastered, okay, on disc one. And then on disc two, you got a new 2018 stereo mix, okay, as well as uh, some live and alternate takes and things like that. So a great album and a great uh, deluxe edition for you to get. Uh, what else we got here? Peter Banks, all right. Original guitar player from Yes. You know, he passed away a number of years ago. And... They've been releasing all sorts of stuff from the vaults from Peter over the last few years since he passed away. Here we've got uh, a big box set called Harmony in Diversity, the complete recordings. All right, so this basically has six CDs in there, which are all sorts of things that he was working on just prior to his passing. All right. All sorts of different styles on here. You know, you got some avant-garde stuff, some little bit of prog, a little bit of jazzy things, some bluesy stuff, a little bit of everything, some some total weirdness as well. Housed in this nice box set, six CDs. I think the thing you got to take out of this is that while there's a ton of material and not all of it is of great quality, man, was he a really good guitar player. I think, you know, he doesn't get a, a lot of credit. Because obviously he was only on those first couple of Yes albums and then he was kicked out and then in comes Steve Howe. Obviously legendary stuff there. But I think like if you listen to like those Flash albums, the band that he put together after he left Yes, really, really good. And if you listen to a lot of his solo albums through the years, the guy was a serious player and a very underrated player. So here you get more examples of just how good of a player he was. Some cool material on here. Like I said, it's a lot of material on here, but definitely worth checking out. And here, something else. Uh, this is from the... Uh, God, what label is this on here? I don't know. Is this Cherry Red, folks? I believe it's from the Cherry Red family, if I'm not mistaken, or the Purple Pyramid, or what have you. Anyway, uh, Curved Air, right? Another underrated, not-so-popular prog band from the 70s, kind of like that second or third tier level of prog bands. Uh, been releasing a whole bunch of stuff from the vaults, live things, and what have you. So this is called uh, the Curved Air Rarity Series, Volume 3, the second British rock meeting from 1972. So this is basically a live performance 
from Germany, all right, in 1972. Uh, Ironically, it's called Live at the Second British Rock Meeting. That was the name of the festival, and but it was in Germany. So a lot of different bands, a lot of very known bands, including uh, Curb Dare. Great booklet in here, which tells the whole story of the whole festival. And it's got, you know, photographs and all sorts of stuff. Let me pull it out here for you. Uh, actually, pretty good recording. I, I dig this quite a bit. So, But if you're, if you're a Curb Dare fan and you love, like, the classic period, uh, you're going to dig this quite a bit. It's a good recording. Not the best, but it's good. A nice performance by the band. That this whole festival is marred by all sorts of craziness and what have you, as most of those festivals were around that time period, right? And uh, like, who else was was here? So Pink Floyd, Humble Pie, Osabisa, The Faces, Kinks, Family, The Doors, who I don't think showed up. Buddy Miles, Uriah Heap, Country Joe McDonald. In fact, I think Heap had to play only half their set because some something happened. I think one of the guys got hit with something and they left the stage and the play. Fans went berserk or some nonsense like that. So anyway, uh, cool stories, cool music. I like that a lot. Last but not least. Uh, so this one, out from uh, Deadline. This is Humble Pie Joint Effort, the lost album from 7475. Uh, they kind of touted this as the first time ever these recordings are made available. available, but that's not true because there was a CD issue of all these songs from these sessions Oh, about a decade, decade and a half ago called um, Running With The Pack. All the same tunes, basically. So this was the uh, Clem Clemson era of the band. So you got Clem on guitar, Steve Marriott, obviously, Jerry Shirley, and um, Greg Ridley on bass. Okay. Now, the weird thing about this is, again, this is Clem Clemson on guitar, but yet every photograph in this... See, on this CD and in the booklets, or the booklet, is Peter Frampton and not Clem. Epic fail, guys. I mean, Peter's in every picture. It's like, what are you doing? If I was Clem Clemson, I'd be pretty upset about this. Uh, if you already own Runner with the Pack, do you need this? Probably not. But um, I, th I think the uh, the packaging is a little better on this, although, of course, obviously, you got the wrong guy in the photographs. But as far as this album goes... I think it's pretty strong. You got a couple tunes that would show up on later albums. Uh, basically, they recorded this album, and uh, their record label rejected it. And they said, we don't really like that material. You guys got to go back and rework it. And they wound up you know, going back and doing a whole new album. But some of these tunes did make it onto previous albums. It's a good mix of like bluesy humble pie with some a little bit of funk, a little bit of R&B and soul, as well as some of the bluesy hard rock they were known for. Pretty strong compared to some of the other albums in that like kind of later era of the you know in the band's history obviously not going to stack up with their classics but still a, a if you don't already have these songs definitely worth getting that because uh for you humble pie completist it's probably a must-have and any humble pie is pretty good if you ask me so that's it this is on the web at www.catranquility.org or on Facebook or on Twitter. Of course, we're here on the Mighty YouTube. Full reviews of all this stuff on the website at uh, www.catranquility.org, like I just mentioned. Uh, more stuff coming up. Chris Allo is actually coming in shortly. We're going to record that D.O. Top 10 songs. That's coming up later this afternoon. Uh, like I said, I got stuff coming up with Steve Keel is going to be guesting on the show. We're going to be live from Rock Fantasy uh, next week. And we're going to have uh, Top 10 songs, The Doors, Testament, Rolling Stones. What else? Don't forget, Monday night, I'm going to be guesting once again on Jeff Young's Music Without Boundaries. Jeff used to play lead guitar in Megadeth. He's got a fantastic radio show every Monday night, so I'm going to be guesting on it Monday night. Just go to uh, Jeff Young Jams, J A M Z, dot com. And Monday night, 10 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 11 p.m. Pacific Time. Check it out. I'll be on with Jeff for a couple hours. Spinning some cool music. Got a lot of stuff keyed up, talking about all sorts of things. And I'm uh, going to try and get to a questions and answers this weekend. I don't know if it's going to happen. If not, it'll be next week. But um, lots of stuff in the pipeline. So stay tuned. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.